Bombs over Baghdad. Bombs over Baghdad. Bombs over Baghdad. So the great philosopher Andre 3000 released his song Bombs Over Baghdad in 99 and 2000. In October 2005 of Blender Magazine, Andre 3000 explained how he got the title to the song. He was in London. He was on tour in London. He turned on the news, and he said that this news reporter was saying something, something, and then bombs over Baghdad. He said it sounded good. He wanted to use it somewhere. So that's how the song got written. The Atlanta rapper B.O.B., who's famous for being a flat earther, he also has the song... uh, I see you haters, all you haters. <laughs> uh, but he took his name from Bombs Over Baghdad, B-O-B. And he thinks that the earth is... Wait, this is 2000, 99, 2000? This would be before Bush. So he's talking about Clinton's Bombs Over Baghdad. He was in tour in London, and he heard a reporter talking about how America was dropping bombs on Iraq. And he made a song about it. So... Uh, I don't think Andre 3000 is really that great of a philosopher, great singer, great rapper, but not a great philosopher. The, he was talking about Bill Clinton's bombs over Baghdad during the Quiet War, the Quiet War which Bernie Sanders had voted for. So if you don't think that's okay, so Bernie Sanders voted for the Iraq Liberation Act. Bernie Sanders signed the uh, C, CNAC, the Century, Century for the New... Let's see, the PNAC, the Progress for a New American Century, the Paul Wolfowitz, the Donald Rumsfeld, and the, um, you know, all these neocons. And you had Bernie Sanders who voted for the war in Somalia. Bernie Sanders voted for the Yugoslavia, the NATO bombings, which didn't have UN Security Council authority. So Bernie Sanders voted for the Kosovo War, Yugoslavia War. He voted for the Somalian War. He voted for the Iraq Liberation Act, which allowed for Bill Clinton's quiet Iraq War. He made sure, for some reason in 2009, that Guantanamo Bay wouldn't be shut down. He says that Edward Snowden needs to be punished, whereas Jill Stein says that Edward Snowden needs to be leading our intelligence agencies. He's an honest man. He forgoed lots of money and took a lot of bullshit in order to say, look, this is what the NSA is doing, and its reach is astounding. His conscience couldn't allow him to continue to do that. But Bernie Sanders says he needs some. Sanders' rhetoric is usually pretty good on Israel-Palestine issues. He was the only one that said that they were people, right, during the presidential campaign. But he falls short. He shows his true colors when he says that he doesn't support the BDS movement. So if you can't boycott, divest, and sanction Israel, then there's no nonviolent measures. It's almost like getting pissed off at Kaepernick for doing his, you know, for not putting his hand over his heart, for kneeling instead of putting his hand over his heart. It's a nonviolent protest. And uh, Bernie Sanders is against it. I mean, that's how you vote with your dollars. So if you're against nonviolent remedies, it's uh, JFK's thing, right? If you make peaceful revolution impossible, then you make violent revolution inevitable. Bernie Sanders is wrong when it comes to Israel-Palestine. He's wrong. had two major operations in Gaza in 2014. It was just a bloodbath. In 2009, it was a bloodbath. Like a thousand, you know, 2,000 Palestinians were killed versus three Israelis. So it's just a asymmetrical, one-sided conflict. Uh, you know, Netanyahu, Bibi, he says that he was just cutting the grass in 2014. Operation Cut the Grass. And so there was a resolution written by Lindsey Graham, Bob Menendez, Senate Resolution 498, July 18th, 2014. And they voted to support Israel's ongoing invasion of the Gaza Strip. No dissenting vote was cast. No mention was made of the hundreds of Palestinian civilians, many women and children who've been killed by Israel in, you know, just 10 days in 2014. So Ben Cardin and Rand Paul. Rand was a town hall meeting where he says Israel may have overreached, but, you know, he blames Hamas for the entire conflict. And then he gets all pissed off at the people who were, you know, um, 
supporting the rights of Palestinians. He has uh, consistently voted for war appropriations, the defense funding for, you know, decades now. It's 2017. So he could say that he's against the first Persian Gulf War and the second Iraq War. He could say that Palestinians are people, but look at his record. Look at his actions. He signed that neocon letter, the PNAC letter. He uh, is in favor of the Iraqi Liberation Act. He voted for the Kosovo-Yugoslavia War. He voted for Somalian War, which is boots on the ground. Bill Clinton's so-called humanitarian mission for boots on the ground in Somalia. Bernie Sanders has been a neoliberal for quite some time. So you have, you know, the Persian Gulf War that happened in 1991, and Bill Clinton was left over with this legacy. Since Papa Bush didn't take Saddam Hussein out, then the United Nations was in charge of Iraq as kind of a, an electorate, right, an international electorate. But since we had conquered them, since we beat them in the war, and then they signed all these peace treaties, apparently the United States thought that they could just, you know, bomb the shit out of them whenever they felt like it. Uh, Bill Clinton bombed him in 93. Bill Clinton, you know, bombed him uh, many times. He bombed him. That's what bombs over Baghdad was. It was Bill Clinton's bombing of Baghdad. It was Bill Clinton's bombing of Iraq. And uh, during the impeachment proceedings, he bombed the shit out of Iraq, Operation Desert Fox. And he bombed the shit out of, Oper you know, out of Iraq during Operation Desert Fox in order to deflect attention away from the impeachment proceedings. He should have been impeached for the war crimes he was Sanders supported economic sanctions against Iraq. So Bill Clinton had this legacy that he needed to do something with Iraq. So they had economic sanctions, which, you know, they thought that a half a million kids who starved to death was a price that was worth it. So he supported economic sanctions, wanted to star starve Iraq into submission. Uh, over half a million, 600,000 children were killed as a result. He voted for the War on Terror, the 2001 authorization for the use of military force that launched all these wars that we're in today, that Donald Trump is doing today. Seven countries, 20 different shadow wars in Africa, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, where he got boots on the ground again in Somalia. So the War on Terror was perpetual. Barbara Lee was the only person that had the foresight and the courage to vote against it. Only one person voted against the War on Terror. And that was Barbara Lee because she didn't want it to be a blank check against an unspecified enemy for an unspecified enemy. Bernie Sanders had voted for the Iraq Liberation Act. Then Bill Clinton would bomb Iraq up until the end of his tenure, and the bombings continued up until the official declaration of war. So there was a five-year quiet war after the Iraq Liberation Act, which was signed by Bernie Sanders you know, in addition to a lot of his other colleagues. In 2014, the entire Senate endorsed the Israeli massacre of Palestinians in Gaza. Bernie Sanders has since regularly voted for voting uh, for military funding that, you know, that launches all these wars and occupations. He voted for the war on terror. He voted for the Somalian war. He voted for the war on Yugoslavia. He was in favor of the economic sanctions that starved all those Iraqi children, 600,000 children. He was a long-standing backer of the most expensive U.S. weapons program, the one point. Clinton bombed Iraq in 1993 after some bullshit story about Kuwait uh, had made up. They said the Iraqis were trying to assassinate Papa Bush, and so Clinton bombed Iraq in 93 for them, you know, trying to do that. Uh, Barack Obama, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, drops over 26,000 bombs in just one year. So far, we've been bombing seven countries lately, right, under Obama, Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, and Libya. So let's, um, well, there's eight, isn't it? So let's see, Pakistan, Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Libya. Okay, so it's miscounted. Um, but that's the seven wars that Obama got us into, and now Trump has expanded it. He's at escalating Afghanistan. He's got a shadow war all throughout Africa right now, probably 20 different countries. That's how we got into Vietnam. You get in there just by a little bit, and surely, even though at one time, a young Bernie Sanders had said that he was against the CIA. Bernie Sanders, a young Bernie Sanders says that he wanted the CIA to be completely dismantled because how they kept on propping up right-wing dictatorships. He even mentions how there is no congressional authority for a lot of these right-wing wars with the war in 
um, Granada and the war in, um, you know, the Contras, the Nicaragua and all the rest. So he points out that the, you know, Chile, the assassination in, of Chile. So he points out how the CIA had did all these different ones. But when he voted for, you know, uh, the war in Kosovo, what he did essentially was he voted for imperialism. He voted to have CIA torture camps, which are there in the Balkans right now. And then he, you know, uh, give permission for that to happen after the bomb. Currently, Donald Trump is guilty of breaking American law with the War Powers Clause. Only Congress can declare wars. Trump is just carrying on a legacy that the Congress in 2001 had gave to George W. Bush. Bernie Sanders also gave to them as he's been funding all these wars, as he's been protecting Israel. He signed that letter, hey, stop picking on Israel, everybody. In 2014, he didn't even condemn the massacre that was going on in Gaza. They were just killing people just to be killing people. And he says they may have overreacted, really may have overreacted. Kosovo. Kosovo uh, directly violated the UN Charter, Articles 53 and 103, its own charter. The 1975 Helsinki Final Act and the 1980 Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. So all these international agreements were being broken by Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, the war of Yugoslavia. When he voted for the war in Yugoslavia, he said that it wasn't constitutional how Bill Clinton was just dropping bombs. But he was like, well, but Panama, Grenada, Vietnam, none of those were congressional wars either. So since all these other Congresses had forego their duty, breaking the War Powers Clause, breaking the War Powers Resolution of 1973, the U.S. Army Manual 2710, it describes lots of crimes against peace. So uh, when it came to the Kosovo War, the war to destroy Yugoslavia once and for all, it, it, what happened, uh, Kosovo is the heartland for the Serbian people. They wanted to go after, they wanted to crush Serbia, no more, get the Western powers in there ever since World War I. So the Serbian government reported that the Kosovo Liberation Army, the people that we supported, killed 10,000 civilians, both Serbs and Albanians, and Jews, and Gypsies, and Turks. The United States government, the CIA, was arming and training the KLA, the Kosovo Liberation members in Albania, and in the summer of 1998, sending them back into Kosovo to assassinate Serbian mayors, ambush Serbian policemen, intimidate hesitant Kosovo Albanians, the aim was to destabilize Kosovo and overthrow the Serbian strongman Slobodan Milosevic. To de destabilize Kosovo. In fact, the entire Arab Spring could be said that it was instigated by the CIA, right? And now what they do? Destabilize countries when it collapses, the people are out on the streets, and now you need U.S. intervention in order to save everybody. A WikiLeaks memo says that the Council of Europe's Secretary General Terry Davis threatened to go public about the use of a NATO facility in Kosovo as a secret torture prison like Guantanamo Bay, like Abu Ghraib, after the alliance had failed to cooperate with the CIA. Talk about how uh, all these appropriations, all these you know, funding bills that Bernie has been passing. Quick note, he was against impeaching Bush. So are you against the war or not really? Just kind of as a political measure, right, Bernie? So Bernie voted for H.R. 2159 in 1997, Foreign Operations Appropriation Bill, which gives $3 billion to Israel, $1.8 billion in military assistance for Israel for their bombs, $1.2 million in economic assistance, $2.12 billion for Egypt, including $1.3 billion in military assistance and $815 million for an economic system. $770 million for former Soviet republics and $215 million for international narcotics control and law enforcement. So he supports the international war on drugs. He's given money for Israel and Egypt. That's Mubarak. So the reason why the, the Egyptian revolution happened because Bernie Sanders had been financing Mubarak. And the whole, he gave him the same amount of money, uh, Mubarak, later on. So in 2003, Bernie supported H.R. 510, which provided $355 billion in appropriations for the D Department of Defense for 2003, an increase of $37.5 billion from 2002. You had $71.6 billion for aircraft, missiles, weapons, combat vehicles, shipbuilding, $7.4 million for ballistic, ballistic missile defense, and then $58.4 million for foreign aid. 
which includes humanitarian assistance, foreign disaster relief, demonin programs. In 2004, $1.8 billion goes to the Egyptian dictator Mubarak. $2.2 billion goes to Israel. So Bernie Sanders voted to finance Israel and Mubarak's military dictatorship in 1997. In 2004, he voted in favor of H.R. 2800, the foreign operations all of these war spending bills in 2004, $102 billion went to Iraq. Bernie supported H.R. 4613, which allocated $25 billion for emergency defense spending for operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, and $77.4 billion for the procurement of new weapons, $50 billion for both Iraq and Afghanistan. In uh, 2005, Sanders supported H.R. 2863, the appropriations bill provided $50 billion for Iraq and Afghanistan, $70 billion in 2006, H.R. 5631, for the ongoing operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, 2007, National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2008, which granted $187.14 billion for Iraq and Afghanistan operations. Either fascist power, money power, unless Bernie arrests Trump himself, only cutting the purse strings will work. That's the only way you can. Sanders supported in 2003 $355 billion going into the Department of Defense. When Bernie Sanders voted in favor of, you know, $1.8 billion for Mubarak and then $2.2 billion for Israel. And then in Iraq, you know, $102 billion in 2004. $102 billion. The, you know, the war funding. You know, $102 billion. And then $50 billion in 2006, $70 billion in 2006, $187 billion in 2007. So $355, $355 billion, $355 billion in 2003, $187 billion in 2007. 2009, he voted in favor of H.R. 2647, which authorized $309 million for research and evaluation, procurement, deployment of alternative missile defense system in Europe. He also allowed the Secretary of the Nine. Bernie Sanders says, we need to close Guantanamo Bay, but then when the vote came up, he rejected it. He did not support closing Guantanamo Bay. Gave the finger to Obama's one of the, you know, few good uh, policies, right? So he voted against closing down Guantanamo Bay because he said it was a com complicated issue. Well, of course he's not against Guantanamo Bay. He got all those Guantanamo Bay torture prisons in the Balkans. So even though he's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. He speaks out of both ends of his mouth. He'll say the Palestinians have human rights, but then vote to, you know, make, allow Israel, give cover for Israel to continue their violent assaults and continue to give them a bunch of money. When it comes to the war in Libya, he was a hypocrite with it, too. said he voted against it. Uh, no, there wasn't a vote, but he voted for the United Nations resolutions, which Hillary Clinton was right. So, Bernie, you supported the Libya war, just like he voted for the crime bill. Bernie Sanders voted for the in 2011, Bernie Sanders co-sponsored Senate Resolution 85, which urged the UN Security Council to take action in Libya, including the imposition of a no-fly zone. No-fly zone meaning only American aircraft can fly over your country. Once you make that, you know, threat, what are you going to do when Russia flies their plane over Libya? You know, to shoot them down, what if Libya flies their own planes over Libya? So, Bernie Sanders, it seems like he goes all the way up and to the very point. The only difference I see is that if it's a Democratic president, he's all for it, but if it's a Republican president, then he won't actually give the authorization, except for the war on terror. So we were able to push Bernie Sanders into imperialism, into a neoliberal with the war on terror in 2001. Bernie Sanders also co-sponsored Obama's USA Freedom Act, which institutionalizes the NSA wiretap program, a piece of legislation presented as a National Security Agency reform bill, but it allows for the bulk collection of emails 20th, 1998, Bill Clinton bombed the Al Shifa plant, the Monica missiles. The Sudan was attacked. There were missiles. They were, what, 50 or so sent them into a hellish fire end here on Earth, 10,000s more. They didn't get their life-saving drugs. So that pharmaceutical plant ended up killing 10,000s of Sudanese. So that was Clinton's bombing of Sudan, okay? So we already knew that Clinton was going to bomb these countries. He was already bombing Iraq. He already put boots on the ground in Somalia. He was in favor of the Yugoslavian war without UN approval, without Senate, without anybody's approval, really. Once the Senate gave him the fig leaf, you know, bill that they put in front of their faces, then he started bombing. 
So the Senate kind of have give them an okay, but essentially they said they were going to bomb no matter what. They weren't going to stop them. So Bill Clinton very much was the precursor to the imperial ambassador to Sudan from 96 to 2000. Warner Dom wrote an article in 2001, which he said several tens of thousands of deaths of Sudanese civilians were caused by a medicine shortage. was a reasonable guess. Tens of thousands of deaths. In Sudan. That's worse than 9-11. That was worse than 9-11. So Bernie Sanders knew that Bill Clinton was imperialist. He knew that he was willing to, you know, invade other countries without the international community. So he knew when he signed the Iraq, the Iraqi Liberation Act of 1998, that he would use that power. He would justify his preemptive imperialism. He would be aggressive, attack countries that hadn't attacked us. Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal was part of that PNAC letter. In January 1998, Bernie Sanders signs that neoconservative letter, urging Bill Clinton to remove Saddam Hussein's regime from power. And Bernie Sanders signed the Iraq Liberation on October 5th. In January 1998, Bernie Sanders signs that PNAC letter saying we need to topple Iraq, gives, you know, Bill Clinton, pushes him to push for the Iraqi Liberation Act. October 5th, 1998, Bernie Sanders signs the Iraqi Liberation Act. It passes the legislation, and then two months and 11 days after Bernie Sanders gave Bill Clinton the go-ahead, he bombed Iraq, the Iraq impeachment bombings. So while he was being impeached over perjury, Monica Lewinsky, that whole fucking crazy, that is so insane. He should have been impeached for the war crimes he commits during the House impeachments, which is important for those who want to impeach Trump. Let's not impeach him over bullshit. Let's impeach him for shit that he actually did, Okay. So this, you know, don't do a political hit job. Do a, um, you know, do something that will stand up to the test of time. The Iraq impeachment bombings, 1,400 Iraqis were killed. So because the Republicans wanted to impeach one day before the House goes to impeach, Bill Clinton over nothing on Monica's blue death, uh, dress, one day before the House was going to vote to impeach him. Operation Desert Fox was put into play. Operation Desert Fox, ironically named, because it's the same nickname as a major Nazi general, Erwin Rommel. Erwin Rommel's nickname was the Desert Fox. That's exactly what Billy Clinton named his December 4-day Iraq bombing campaign in 1998. Two American pilots died and 1,400 Iraqis were killed during those Iraqi impeachment bombings. And that was because he had permission from Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders signed the Iraq Liberation Act in October of 98. He signed that PNAC letter in January of 98. And then December of 1998, Bill Clinton is bombing Iraq. Big fucking shocker. And then bombs over Baghdad. Bill Clinton kept on bombing Iraq all throughout the days of the House impeachment vote. Just an hour or two after the House impeachment vote ended, Bill Clinton surprise, surprise, ended the bombing. And when they asked him why, he said, well, we achieved our objectives. What were the objectives? The objectives was the optics. You know, the impeachment proceeding, that's embarrassing. You don't want to go through an imp impeachment proceeding. So there's people defending Trump. Hey, don't, don't impeach Trump. You're going to get Pence. <laughs> that's probably, maybe that's why they picked Pence. I don't know. And Jesse Ventura said that, you know, he's probably going to get shot because that, you know, Pence, they forced him to choose Pence as his VP. I don't think so. I disagree. The optics were bad for Bill Clinton. He didn't like the perception, and so he was bombing the shit out of Iraq to remind everybody he's the commander-in-chief. He's got all this firepower. And he distracted the American people. I think it actually was a success for doing what he wanted to do. The Iraq impeachment bombings, the Operation Desert Fox, was rooted in Clinton's political survival in office. Bill Clinton wanted to survive politically. He didn't give a shit about world security. So Serbia, Kosovo, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Sudan, these are all victims of Bill Clinton's impeachment hearings and bullshit, plus global hegemony and neoliberalism. And Bernie Sanders voted in favor of all this. He knew that Bill Clinton was an imperialist. He knew it. So he didn't get authorization for the use of military force with Yugoslavia. He just did it. He didn't get a declaration of war against Iraq, as was done with the first Gulf War, or the first Iraq War. Papa Bush, he got a declaration of war. But Bill Clinton just got on TV, said, hey, nation, we're going to bomb Baghdad. So, you know, and the reason why Bill Clinton 
reason why Bill Clinton had said, you know, that we needed to bomb Iraq during the impeachment proceedings was because they weren't going to allow the UN inspectors into the country. But that wasn't true at all. 2,000 missiles rained down upon Iraq. No diplomacy, no warning. The first Tomahawk cruise missiles were fired from six destroyers, one cruiser and an attack submarine at about 11 p.m. Baghdad time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. They hit military industrial targets in Iraq. Simultaneously, two hours later, Pentagon officials said 1,400 Iraqi soldiers, we're going to assume no civilians, no civilians were killed, only the soldiers, 1,400 soldiers and two American pilots. Colin Powell, in his February 5, 2003, infamous speech before the UN Security Council, said that Saddam Hussein forced out the last inspectors in 1998. They didn't force them out. Okay, so what happened here? So the UNS Richard Butler, he said it was U.S. Ambassador Peter Burley, Burley acting on instructions from Washington who suggested that Richard Butler pull his team out from Iraq. He was the UNSCOM inspector. So this is the United Nations inspector. Hey, why don't you get your team out, according to the U.S. ambassador, in order to protect them from the oncoming U.S. and British airstrikes. According to Richard Butler, I received a telephone call from U.S. Ambassador Peter Burleigh inviting me for a private conversation at the U.S. mission. Burleigh informed me that on the instructions from Washington, it would be prudent to take measures to ensure the safety and security of UNSCOM, UNSCOM staff presently in Iraq. I told him I would act on this advice and remove my staff from Iraq. Operation Desert Fox didn't have the approval of the American people, nor Congress, nor UN Security Council authorization. And for over 100 hours, Iraq got lashed with 415 impeachment bombings of Iraq, Clinton's impeachment bombings of Iraq, Operation Desert Fox in December of 1998, which Bernie Sanders voted to approve, voted for this. Bill Clinton himself ordered the United Nations inspectors out. Once he got the United Nations inspectors out, then he could go ahead and bomb the shit out of Iraq because, you know, there wasn't, the American people didn't approve, Congress didn't approve, the United Nations didn't approve, and for over 100 hours, Iraq got lashed with 415 cruise missiles and 600 laser-guided bombs. 1,400 people were killed, 1,400 people were killed, plus two American pilots. Why did those two American pilots die? Because the Republicans want to do some partisan hit job over some dumb bullshit perjury fucking charge about whether or not he had a relationship. I currently, what is the definition of is? Clinton ordered Richard Butler to write a report that Iraq wasn't cooperating when the U.S. seemed poised to bomb Iraq. The U.N. Secretary General at the time, Kofi Annan, traveled to the country to hammer out a new framework for inspections. Under the deal, sensitive strikes like palaces would be subject to special rules for inspection. It was only when Iraq's government tried to enforce the deal that the U.S. launched a new round of bombing. So Saddam Hussein was playing by the rules. The United States wasn't because Bill wanted to bomb Iraq so he could get away, you know, he can uh, not be impeached. He got the impeached, but he wasn't convicted. So, you know, I guess his objectives were achieved. The U.N. Secretary General Kofi Annan was reasonably angry that Clinton ordered out not just the UN, uh, U.S. inspectors, but all the U.N. inspectors, which he apparently, you know, he didn't have the authority to do, but he did it. So Bill Clinton is the reason why there is no U.N. inspectors in Iraq. The bombings didn't stop just in those four days. That was the most intensive bombing campaign, but the Iraq quiet war, the quiet Iraq war happened from 98 to 2003. So, you know, it, it lasted up until that Operation Desert Fox in 98, up until the 2003 authorization, you know, to uh, kill Iraqis. The U.S. and U.K. bombed Iraq at least three times every week under the guise of enforcing a no-fly zone. Disgusted with the situation, Hans von Sponeck, the U.N. humanitarian coordinator in Iraq at the time, took it upon himself to compile reports on the airstrikes. In 1999 alone, Hans von Sponeck, documented an average of one bombing every three days, killing a total of 120 people and injuring 442. Every three days, in one year, just in 99, 120 people were killed. And it lasted for five years. Over one million Iraqi civilians had... Over one million Iraqi civilians died from the sanctions. I've heard half a million, 600,000, mostly children under the age of five. So we really punished the shit out of those children. Bernie Sanders really showed those Iraqi kids, you know, what, you know, he means business. 
this isn't Iraq saying it. This is figures from UNICEF, the World Health uh, uh, Organization, the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization, the UN's Department of Humanitarian Affairs. We killed one million people in Iraq with the invasion, half a million, you know, with the starving of the people with the economic sanctions. That's one to two million dead souls on our collective American hands. All of our hands are bloody. But Bernie Sanders voted for this. Bernie Sanders voted for the economic sanctions. He voted for the Iraq Liberation Act. It was only the, um, the Iraq war he was against. He was war for Bush's war on terror. So I think he could have actually gone into Iraq with that authorization anyways. Isn't that how we're in Somalia today? So, you know, for five years, this, uh, the, Bill Clinton kept bombing Iraq up until baby Bush's inauguration in March 2001 under the guise of so-called no-fly zones in northern and southern Iraq. He uh, authorized the longest sustained U.S. bombing campaign since Vietnam. This is also with the help of Tony Blair. So Tony Blair was there too, the Prime Minister of the U.K., the Labour Party, right? He's the liberal, a neoliberal. He was bombing Iraq at an average of three times a week. He kept bombing them, right? They had air raid sirens screaming as bombers from the U.S. and British launched missile strikes in on Baghdad. That happened February 16th, 2001. So the Bush, baby Bush is going to be inaugurated in March 2001, but February 16th, 2001, Bill Clinton obviously overtly bombed the shit out of Iraq. Like just one month before George W. Bush gets into office, Bill Clinton is um, bombing Iraq. So it's almost like, yeah, before Papa Bush is the one that put boots on the ground in Somalia and then Bill Clinton carried that operation on. And Bill Clinton did the same thing to baby Bush. He already had operations going for baby Bush to carry on. And, um, and you know, it set the stage for his bloody invasion. The American people had been conditioned. It was a quiet war, completely lopsided, asymmetrical war. In 99, we spent a billion dollars dropping on bombs in Iraq, and then it was $1.4 billion in 2000. So we kept on spending more money to bomb Iraq under Bill Clinton, under Bernie Sanders' authorization. I know he's a senator, and he voted for the Yugoslavia war, like after he was a House representative then, so he, after the invasion had began. What did he have to lose? He could have voted. I'm not going to compromise on the Palestinians any, anymore. That's absolutely fucking bullshit. Get a two-state solution. It, it, it is a very, actually, easy situation. Here's Israel. Here's Palestine. Now, shut the fuck up. You want to build that goddamn wall? Build that fucking wall. But don't cross the wall. This side is Palestine. This side is Israel. Two-state solution. Bernie Sanders continues to vote for funding the wars and occupation, including the Iraq War, the Israeli occupation. If he's against the Iraq War, why does he keep... Funding it. Oh, yeah. Same reason he was funding Bill Clinton's neoliberal adventures, too. So he said he supported the use of force to stop ethnic cleansing in the Balkans. And then he said that uh, he also voted for the war on terror. And whereas, you know, he didn't vote for the first Iraq war, the second Iraq war. At one time, he wanted the CIA to be dismantled. He has good rhetoric when it comes to Palestine. Bernie said poll the Serbians today, 81% said that they live best in the age of socialism. Similar trends exist in Slovenia, Bosnia, Macedonia. So, you know, this is privatization by bombing. This is capitalism by gunpoint. NATO launched its 78-day round-the-clock aerial assault on Yugoslavia without the approval of the United Nations Security Council, without the approval of Congress, without a congressional declaration of war. They skipped over the Congressional Declaration of War where 1,000 NATO warplanes delivered over 2,000 airstrikes, killing thousands of civilian men, women, children, uh, upwards of 1,000 Yugoslav soldiers and police. This is Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders voted in favor of this. So it was to break up Yugoslavia, make Serbia neoliberal like the rest of the former Yugoslavia, take the attention off of Monica, get close we went into the Balkans was because of this so-called genocide. But the genocide killed like, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 people. That's not much of a genocide, especially when you see that the KLA killed 10,000. We killed 1 million in Iraq and half a million. We starved them out with the sanctions. Isn't a million people genocide? Isn't that a genocide? 
how can we keep defining what a genocide is, but then when we perpetuate it, that's not a genocide? It's like when they do it, we d d say it's genocide under the smallest pretenses. But when we do it, massive systemic, you know, on a massive systemic scale, a Spanish NATO pilot confirmed that NATO jets were destroying the country, bombing it with novel weapons, toxic nerve gases, surface mines dropped with parachute, bombs containing uranium, black napalm, sterilization chemicals, springs to poison the crops, and more. One of the biggest barbarities that could be committed against humanity. That's one of our guys. Spanish NATO pilots said that. So Bernie Sanders has supported the Israeli occupation. He supported right-wing dictatorships like Mubarak in Egypt with these funding bills. The way you get out of war is you cut the purse strings. That's the only power Congress has. I'm not for sure if he understands power. I, I'm not for sure if he does. So he is in favor of these neoliberal adventures. He was for the war in Somalia. He was for the war in Yugoslavia. He voted... Uh, for Obama's U.S. Freedom Act, which institutionalizes the NSA wiretapping program. And let's go to the Somalian War. That was May 25th, 1993. 179 House of Representatives, Bernie's colleagues at the time, voted against the Somalian War. Bernie Sanders was a U.S. rep from 91 to 2007. So 179 House reps voted against the Somalian War, but Bernie Sanders said no. Bomb Somalia. Secrets says that Bernie Sanders has accepted nearly $50,000 in donations from Raytheon Corporation, the company that produces missiles the U.S. government uses to kill foreigners. So he's going to make some money with this, you know, Saudi Arabian deal that Trump just did. Uh, he voted in favor of the Iraq Liberation Act of 1997. Cynthia McKinney, John Conyers, John Lewis were of oh, the only 38 House reps who didn't sign it. In the Senate, it was unanimous. So... You had 38 House reps who did stand up against it. John Lewis, John Conyers, Cynthia McKinney said, fuck this Iraq Liberation Act of 98. Not Bernie Sanders, though. He stood up proudly. He stood up proudly for the Iraq Liberation Act. He stood up proudly for the Somalian War. 179, mostly probably Republicans, probably a partisan thing, right? But they did what was right. They did good things. 179 people voted against the Somalian War in 93, but Bernie Sanders voted. 2009, Bernie Sanders did not vote to shut down the Guantanamo Bay prison over some stupid bullshit reason. Bernie Sanders signed the 1994 crime bill, which caused massive incarceration, the three strikes rule. He voted for the 2011 Libya, UN Libya resolution, which called for Gaddafi to step down and to let democracy flourish there, calling for the UN to freeze Gaddafi's assets and to declare no-fly zones over Libya, which is akin to a declaration of war. He knew Hillary was behind it. He knew what the consequences of that vote would have been. So in 2014, he joined the other 99 senators in endorsing the Israeli massacre of Palestinians in Gaza. He's regularly voted for military funding to all these wars, all these occupations. He launched the war on Afghanistan, which we're still in today. He supported economic sanctions, starving Iraq into submission, 600,000 children. He's a long-standing backer of the most expensive U.S. weapons program, the $1.4 trillion F-35 fighter jet, some of them which would be based in Burlington, Vermont, his hometown. According, um, I've heard that the F-35 fighter jet is going to be obsolete in no time whatsoever, but we got trillions of dollars, billions upon billions to bomb here and bomb there and bomb everybody. No money for health care, though. Unlimited money to bomb everybody in the fucking world, but no money for health care. In Kosovo, he uh, supported Bill Clinton's bombing, even though it had no UN authorization. It didn't even have congressional authorization. NATO's actions directly violated the UN Charter, Articles 53 and 109, the 1975 Helsinki Final Act, and then the 1980 Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. So lots of international treaties where Sanders was against impeaching George W. Bush. Oh, it's impractical. Oh, okay, but it's totally practical to bomb the shit out of one million Iraqi people. Right? What did we get out of Iraq? We could have bought the fucking country for the amount of money that Bernie Sanders voted for when it comes to this war. He didn't object to having his name included by unanimous consent in uh, Senate Bill 498 back Israel's brutal summer-long military assault against Gaza. It just go on and on. I like the money thing because I think the money thing actually is where his power really is. 
2003, he voted for $355 billion in appropriations. He voted against the Iraq War, but then voted for $355 billion to be given to the War Department, which was an increase of $38 you know, billion. And then you had uh, $1.8 million, or a billion given to e Egyptian dictator Mubarak in 2004. $2.2 billion in, it was given to Israel at the same time. H.R. 2800, the Foreign Operations Appropriations, FY 2004 bill, $1.4 million in military and economic assistance to Egypt, $2.2 billion for Israeli military assistance. What did they do with that money? Oh, yeah, in 2008, 2009, they killed a shit ton of fucking kids. So you have 2004, $102 billion was given to Iraq. Bernie Sanders supported it. And that you know that it's more money for Iraq and Afghanistan. Fifty billion for both Iraq and Afghanistan in 2005. Sanders supported HR 2863, Defense Department appropriation bill. So 50 more billion, 50 more billion in 2005. 102 billion in 2003. 355 billion in 2003. Right? 355 billion in 2003. 102 billion for 2004. And uh, 50 billion in 2005, 70 billion in 2006, 87 billion dollars in 2007. So you know, he supported the fucking war. How do you not? You say you voted against the war, but then you voted for 187 billion dollars in 2007, uh, 70 billion in 2006, 50 billion in 2005, 102 billion in 2004, and then you know. Oh, well, 150, 355, my bad, $355 billion in 2003, plus the foreign operations appropriations with the Egyptian dictator Mubarak in Israel, right, $1.8 billion for Egypt, $2.2 billion for Israel. He, I mean, as much as he likes to say he's for Palestinian rights and that he is against the Iraq war, he voted for the Iraq, the quiet war for Bill Clinton so he could bomb the shit out of them during the impeachment proceedings. And he's been voting for every single one of these funding bills, every single one of them, till today. He's still doing it. He hasn't stopped. Kosovo doing today. I mean, we spent all that money and we helped liberate the Albanian Muslims. So I'm sure they're doing wonderful today. Well, actually, the number one place for ISIS fighters is out of Kosovo. There's a 31% unemployment rate, 60% uh, among young adults. It's pretty much fucked up, okay? It's, it's in disarray. It's not great, okay? I'm sure it's livable, and if you live there, you know, have pride for your country or whatever. Uh, or not, I don't know. I mean, this was created by the United States, so this was helped. This came out of the Ottoman Empire versus the Serbia, so... In a way, this was good because we defended Muslims, right? Uh, but I'm not for sure if we actually picked the right side. In fact, it almost seems like we created Kosovo out of nothing, and the Albanians want bigger and bigger area. They don't just want Kosovo. They want to take over a lot of spaces. So we didn't help Kosovo, and Bernie Sanders has been hypocritical. He's compromised. Obama Bernie, Obama Bernie, in 1999 when anti-war activists were in his office, he had him arrested, right? Yeah, you know, I guess apparently he's anti-establishment until he is the establishment. Then he's totally for establishment. Now, you know, he was the House of Representative from 91 to 2007. Then he was a senator from 2007 to 2017 and counting. He's still there. The war in Afghanistan sunk the USSR. We've already killed bin Laden. He was in Pakistan. So sorry, Bernie, your Iraq war or your Afghanistan war vote was wrong, and that was the war on terror. You know what that bill looked like. That bill said all these presidents can declare war on the entire world for the rest of our fucking lives. And Bernie Sanders voted in favor of it. He didn't have the political courage then. He didn't have the political courage that Barber Lee did. Bernie Sanders is compromised. He's compromised. All that being said, He's still the best politician that we have, and he inspired a generation. He made socialism is not a cuss word anymore because of Bernie Sanders. He brought a lot of these issues up. His rhetoric is pretty close to being the truth, but because of the U.S. Freedom Act, which institutionalized the NSA wiretapping program, he co-sponsored that because he says Edward Snowden deserves some punishment because Bernie uh, co-sponsored Senate Resolution 85, which urged the UN Security Council to uh, put a no-fly zone over Libya because of all these war appropriation bills, you know, $187 billion in 2008, $70 billion in 2006, $50 billion in 2005, 
102 billion in 2004, and then you had 355 billion, 355 billion in 2003. He didn't object to having his name by put on by unanimous consent. that had a picture with the Syrian white hats. So once more, we're arming terrorists in order to fight our battles. We call them the democracy group or some shit. So this is the pro-democracy forces. And uh, Bernie didn't object to having his name included by unanimous consent Senate Bill 498, which backed Israel's brutal summer-long military assault against Gaza in 2014. So, you know, with his war funding, with his uh, Israel funding, he's not opposed to the occupation. He says BDS is bullshit. He doesn't even give a peaceful option for how Palestinians are supposed to fight this, right? He's such a fucking, he's a pretend liberal. In fact, people go after Hillary for being a neoliberal, yeah, but Bernie Sanders was there the entire time. That's why they were able to occupy the same state. That's why Hillary was like, well, shit, even though he's not a Democrat, I still have to stand on the stage with him because he's been voting for all. So he was okay with the $2 billion for Israel and $2 billion for Mubarak in 2004. He was also okay with it in the 90s, $3 billion for Israel and uh, $2 billion for Egypt. So the Kosovo, he voted for the war in Kosovo. He voted for the war in Somalia. He gave uh, Bill Clinton's uh, authorization to have a quiet war on Iraq with the Iraq Liberation Act. So he was for the quiet Iraq war. He's been for the Iraq war ever since it's been declared with the funding and the occupations. And uh, he doesn't condemn, you know, Israel when they, that was horrible. What the fuck Israel did in 2014 and 2009 is fucking criminal and fucking bullshit. Just piling dead babies on fucking top of one another for something that maybe maybe a couple people did, but this, it's, uh, wasn't proportional. It was asymmetrical. So he voted for the war in uh, he voted to destroy Yugoslavia. Voted for the expensive U.S. weapons program, the 1.4 trillion dollars F-35 fighter jet. You know he's in favor of that because you know it's given uh, some jobs to Vermontans, right, to the Burlatonians. So in Burlington, Vermont, you got this weapons factory to build F-35s, which are going to be obsolete anyways. So because it, you know, jobs, right? Isn't that what the Nazis said? I'm just doing my job. So he voted for the 2011 Libya UN resolution for the no-fly zones. He signed the 1994 crime bill, which caused massive incarceration in the three strikes law. He voted for the Iraq Liberation Act of 1998, even though Cynthia McKinney, John Conyers, and John Lewis did. Uh, not. He voted for the Somalian war, even though 179 House representatives did not vote for it. He voted for the USA Freedom Act, institutionalizing the wiretapping program, and he didn't shut down Guantanamo.